you will notice I've drawn my graph two things. Number one, I've drawn it unseasonably large. That probably doesn't surprise you about me because you know I love big graphs. Um, but more interestingly, I have this huge portion of the graph that I know I'm going to have to ignore, okay? Because it's negative, which means when I take the square root, it doesn't exist. I'm not going to draw anything for that part, okay? However, in order to do this accurately and point out some of the important features of it, it's actually very important I have a gradient like this. If you make it too narrow, you're going to start to run into some problems, as you might have noticed if you did that, okay? So, here's what I'm going to notice. Ordinates. Ordinates, right? Ordinates are really, really important to me, okay? Because ordinates, firstly, these negatives, I know I can ignore them. Secondly, what's the easy ordinate to get on this? Yeah. Zeros, right? So I've got an endpoint here and an endpoint here. That's the easy part. But there's one other ordinate, or rather a pair of ordinates, that are also really important to me. Because I know when I take the square root, I know what they're going to be. The x value for which y is the one. Very good. I want the um, where horizontally, the x value, am I going to go up to 1? Because clearly, I'm below 1 at some point, which means you're going to get this kind of behavior. And then I'm above 1 for other points, which means you're going to get this kind of behavior. So there's a switch over, and I want to know where that is. Okay. Now, exactly as was mentioned, it's wherever y equals 1. Wherever y equals 1 and where it intersects with that graph. Now this point is actually really important to me, so I'm going to work it out first, okay? If I want um, this graph to equal one, right, I get this guy, I get this quadratic, okay? Now if I just rearrange it into general form, you look, and you look, and you look, and you will not be able to factorize that because it has irrational roots. Let's quickly work out what they are. X equals. Minus b, which is 1, yeah. plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is plus 4, all over 2a, which is 2. Okay. Now, this is really important to me because, oops, <laughs> this number is so important it gets given, um, you guys remember how I said things get names in proportion to their significance, how many people use them, how broadly it's used? The positive case of this, 1 plus the square root of 5 uh, on 2, is a number called the golden ratio. Uh, mathematicians seem to fight with 5, right? Now, you, uh, some of you will know this, okay? But for me, what's important is, okay, well, where is this? What is the square root of 5, roughly? 2 point something. And it's going to be, it's obviously between 2 and 3. It's going to be closer to 2, two point two three. than 3. 2.23, okay? So therefore, what are my actual values here? What are my actual values? Can someone give me maybe just one decimal place? Uh, what's 1 minus the square root of 5 on 2? And what's 1 plus the square root of 5 on 2? I can tell, give me, actually, you know what? Let's do 3. I know that the golden ratio is about 1.618. Right, what's the other one? Minus 3. 6, what, sorry? Okay, so the reason why these are important to me is because I want to know roughly where these happen, right? I know where 1 is, so therefore I should know where 1.6 is. Okay, so you see my, um, my scale is going to fail me here, but I can get roughly, let's actually call it, say, for example, let's call it this point and roughly that point, okay? You can draw your horizontal scale better than I can, but I just need to know where they are. Okay, now being that at both these points, what is the significance of these points? Why did I find them? They, they that's, where the, that's where the ordinate is equal to 1, right? And I know what the square root of 1 is. It's 1. So it's there and there. Are you happy with that? So I'm going to pass through here, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to pass through here, I'm going to go this way. How am I going to do it? All of the ordinates here are between 0 and 1, right? If you take the square root of a number, between 0 and 1, the square root is going to be higher. higher right? The square root of a quarter is a half, which is higher. So therefore, up here, I'm going to look like this. I'm always going to be above that graph. But then, once I pass over here, these ordinates are bigger than 1. right? They're like 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So the square root's always got to stay underneath it. Okay? Now, it's therefore going to do something like this. Now, I happen to know that's going to go, and it's not going to be like a log that sort of gets shallower forever. 
It kind of is, but not the way a log does. And at the same time, I also know it's not going to get steeper. The question is, how do I know? Very good. So let me use some, um, uh, first I should finish off over here. Um, let me use our language of limits to see what's going on. When you say the limit as x approaches infinity of the square root of x squared minus x, what is that? Right? Now I know the x squared and the x, well they're both important terms. But when you get to infinity, how important is that minus x really? Like, and in comparison to x squared, not important at all. You might as well have that guy. Okay? You might as well. Now, I don't need to know what exactly that is. All I need to know is what that gradient is. Right? That's the absolute value of x. Yes? The absolute value of x, its gradient over here is negative 1. Right? Going down like that. And the absolute value of x on this side is positive 1. You see, it should be going off to a straight line, basically. Okay, that's what it's approaching. And I know that because, again, it's kind of like that tug of war thing, remember? Like, this thing's obviously growing, but the x squared and the square root, they kind of cancel each other out. It's just this minus x, which is just throwing us for a bit of a curve in between. Okay? And there's the graph. So, so do you mind repeating that? Question? Yeah, I will. Okay. So, my argument was about this guy, right? This guy in here. Okay? And I was saying, look, just like with polynomials in general, the important term is the leading term. It's the one with the degree attached to it. I don't care how big these guys are going to be eventually, this guy will always be the, you know, the 800 pound gorilla in the room. He'll be the significant term, okay? So being that as x approaches infinity and negative infinity, this is really the term that matters. This term can be regarded as trivial. Okay, we can more or less ignore it, which leaves you with this, which is just the absolute value of x. Like that's one of the definitions of the absolute value of x. And I know what the absolute value of x and its gradient, how it looks. Negative one and one, roughly speaking. Okay.